It's right there. Good afternoon. I don't want to don't want to leave out these folks over here, but we're, we're leaning a little heavy to one side. My name is My name is Skylar Brinson. I'm the minister of music here. Thank you for joining us for this afternoon program, and to the folks who are joining us online, a welcome to you as well. I didn't realize that the picture and the shirt I'm wearing were the same thing today. That was not planned. <clears throat> I do have other clothing. This is not the only shirt I have. <laughs> this program today, uh, I have been thinking about doing for probably a little over a year. And some, some folks have asked questions about uh, uh, some possible programming. And as I told Ryan, I, gave, there's no, I didn't pass out an official program or anything. I gave him a list of, of hymns. Um, we may get through all of them today, we may not. <laughs> but I wanted to share a lot of, of my favorite hymns. I grew up in the Methodist Church, uh, and as, as far back as I can remember, I started learning the hymns. Uh, my dad was the choir director, so I was always at church extra uh, and, and singing and, and working with them. And my uh, piano teacher that I studied with uh, when I started in second grade, he was uh, still is a church musician, and he... Uh, saw my love for, for the church and church music and, and knew that I wanted to, to play in church. And so part of our um, lessons and my study was we'd just pull out the hymnal and we'd learn hymns. And then as I advanced, um, we would start uh, doing, learning hymn arrangements. And so that was always integrated in my, in my studies all the way up uh, uh, through high school. And when I was in eighth grade, I started playing at my home congregation. So all of, all of my life, all of my, my musical career, uh, church music has always been involved, and I've always uh, been playing hymns. And I think that the hymns still speak to us today just as much as they did when they were written hundreds of years ago. And there are um, a lot of the texts... Uh, are a lot of my favorites, and so that's, that's kind of where I came about in, in finding and choosing the hymns for today. So, you came to hear music and not me talk, so let's get started.
Since we don't have a program today, this will kind of be like name that tune. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of play a game. So the very first piece was uh, the hymn, When in our music God is glorified. And the second one was? Blessed Assurance, yes. <laughs> That's the chorus. <laughs> A lot of the arrangements uh, this afternoon are by one of my favorite uh, composers and arrangers, which is, is no stranger to probably many of you here, Marquez. Uh, I think he, he does a wonderful job in capturing um, the mood and the, the text uh, that, is, that is written of these hymns. And he has some fun and um, writes and arranges them in, in different styles. So you'll hear, hear some different styles this afternoon uh, as, as we go along. This next set of pieces, um, Jesus is all the world to me, my Jesus I love thee, and then all creatures of our God and King.
So here lie ends the problem. We won't be hearing all creatures of our God and King today. So I'm playing from my iPad and I scanned all the music except that piece. <laughs> it's not in there. <laughs> and I don't know it well enough to play it from memory. So we will, we will program that one on the next, the next program. We can't play everything today. So the next set is uh, a hymn called Sweet By and By, In the Sweet By and By. And then I'll follow that up with When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. And in the middle of that one is another hymn. So be listening. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet, but be listening in the middle of that one for, for another hymn. Um, the, when the Roll is Called Up Yonder is, is one of the first kind of styles that we see Mark uh, play with with a hymn uh, today. He has written this one or arranged this one in a Latin samba style. He says in the program notes that if he were playing with a combo, uh, piano, bass, and drums, he would tell the other musicians to play in the Latin feel or style. Um, and I have taken the liberty of the, the tune or the hymn that is in the middle that I'm not going to tell you. The, the way he has written it, the chord structure that is in there, it, it sounds, um, it doesn't fit in that Latin style for me, so I've taken the artistic license to make it more of a, a gospel-sounding um, style for that hymn in the middle.
and the hymn in the middle was? When we all get to heaven. Yes, the chorus of when we all get to heaven is, is there in the middle. The next piece is the Reformation hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. And he um, takes, takes a, several pages to expand uh, this piece. He even puts um, the middle section uh, in a minor key, which is, which is interesting for some people when they hear hymns that they know well and, and like, and all of a sudden they've been put in a, in a minor key. Um, so he, he builds this up, he puts it in a minor key, and then he, he takes us back to the major key and, and um, ends, ends the piece rather bombastically.
So we had Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. What was the tune in the middle of that one? He Leadeth Me. And then we just had In the Garden. The next piece uh, is a hymn that doesn't need any introduction, uh, The Old Rugged Cross. But I want to share just a few, few of the notes that uh, Mark gives on this piece. The, um, the introduction and the, and the first part of the piece is patterned after uh, some classical composers. Uh, this one in particular after Rachmaninoff. And you hear that in the, the opening uh, with all of these big, big chords. And then he sets the, two, or the first two verses of the hymn in a minor key. And this is one of them that I think when you, when you read the text, um, the first two, these first two verses that we hear in the minor key, I think really grab a hold of the suffering that happened, that we read in the text. It builds and builds, and finally he settles in on a major key. And he tells the, the player in the, the pianist in the notes that when you get to that point, just rest. Let that, let that tonality shift. Because all of a sudden, if you read the last verse, you, you sense um, glory. And, it, and all of a sudden, it, it, as I'm playing it, I see when that, when that tonality finally shifts, it's like the sky opens up. So I encourage you, I don't know off the top of my head what the page number is of the old rugged cross. If you want to look it up, you can. Five, Ruth says it's 548. If we were using the Methodist hymnal, I could tell you it's 504. That's what I grew up on. Uh, 548. Um, but I think he does a, a, a great job of capturing uh, this text. And then finally, um, that sense of, of joy uh, on that final verse. So here is the old rugged cross.
There's a lot of emotion in that piece, isn't there? The next two pieces, uh, the first one is Because He Lives, which if I remember correctly, earlier this year in 2020, or excuse me, 2020, 22, um, Because He Lives uh, celebrated its 50th anniversary of when it was written uh, by Bill and Gloria Gaither. The uh, next piece after that is a text that I have uh, loved for a very long time. What a friend we have in Jesus. Growing up, I, uh, when I started playing at my home church, I wanted to take organ lessons so that I could play organ. And I started teaching myself. I'd play hymns I knew so I could stare at my feet because I didn't know what they were supposed to do. But my soon-to-be high school choir director was the organist at the First Presbyterian Church in downtown Brazil, Indiana. And um, he was good friends with our family, and so we, uh, my parents sought him out and asked him to give me some organ lessons so I could, um, I wanted to be able to at least play hymns at church. And so I started on my own and then started taking lessons from him, and I was always excited to go to his church to take lessons because he had a real pipe organ. We had an electronic, we have a nice electronic uh, instrument here. My home church had an old Wurlitzer uh, organ, which if you know what that is, that's actually a theater organ, um, but you can make it sound like a church organ, and we did our best. Uh, so I was always excited to go down and play the pipe organ because it was uh, in, the, in the balcony of the church, there was this huge, beautiful stained glass window, and in front of it was all the pipes, and then the console set right in the middle uh, with your, as you were facing, facing the pipes, and your back was to the congregation uh, downstairs, and, and I would uh, later on go down and listen to him play because my service uh, was first and I could make it down to hear him play uh, his service. I'd sneak up into the balcony and sit up there and listen. But I always loved going down there and, and, and taking lessons and, and playing because I got to play the real, the real instrument. One of the things that he is very gifted at is taking hymns and kind of arranging them on the fly. And any time I would hear him play, I would always hover around the keyboard and watch his hands because he could take these he could just take a hymn out of the hymnal and change the chords and it would just be so rich and it would just it would it would get you it would do something and I always wanted to know I said how do you do that it's like well you know I just kind of sit down and play I'm like well that's not very helpful I wanted I want to know what you what you're doing so he he in our lessons he talked talked through some of that with me but I always watched what he did so he said well take a hymn and give it a try so I really liked the hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And so that was the hymn that I picked, and I started playing around with, with the chords. And um, through his help, uh, have, have come up with my own arrangement that I made back in, back in high school. Uh, so play Because He Lives, and then an arrangement of What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
I hope you've enjoyed this afternoon's program. Uh, there's been a lot of music, a lot of hymns, um, but one of, the, one of the ideas I had when I put this together was for it to be a time, a worshipful experience as we worship through music uh, and through these hymns. It has been that for me, and I hope that has, has been the case for you as well. I have one more uh, piece to perform. I'm not sure why I keep putting, at the end, putting it at the end of programs, because as the composer stated, it's like the tour de force. It uses everything uh, the piano can offer and the player can offer. But it is an arrangement of How Great Thou Art. Uh, another one of my favorite hymns, and this really um, kind of, it really captures the grandeur of, of this hymn. So I uh, close today and leave you with How Great Thou Art. <laughs> 